Well, we've got yet another, yet another juicy sommelier case, this time with an ESPN reporter. Everybody seems to want that 15 minutes of fame to, I don't know, be a victim. Apparently, that's the easiest way to do it. We saw it with Juicy Sommelier, where he apparently entered mega country downtown Chicago at 2 a.m. on his way to his Subway sandwiches. We also saw this with Bubba Wallace, where <laughs> let's not forget, you know, everybody who's, uh, you know, um, who's who's standing for Nikki Haley, she fell for it when uh, Bubba Wallace said that a garage pull down, which is on every major garage door, that's an overhead door that doesn't have a power opener, uh, was a noose, even though it was on every other garage door. But because he was black and it was BLM cash in money time, he suddenly said it was a noose in which our FBI investigated and found that it was in fact not a noose. But that didn't stop Bubba Wallace, who's I don't think ever won a race in his life from raking in the cash from it. Now we have a ESPN writer claiming that in all cities, San Francisco, he was racially profiled and told that he couldn't use the bathroom, that it was a whites only bathroom. The only problem is that was a lie. ESPN writer claims that he was racially profiled at a San Francisco store because he was told to use the bathroom at the police station across the street. The only pro problem, they tell that every customer, regardless of skin color, to use that bathroom. Oh, raspberries. 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 He barely even looks black. I don't know. I wouldn't. I would just think he was a, a guy with tan, a tan guy. And, and maybe he's looking for. Maybe he's like Colin Kaepernick, who's constantly trying to get his get his black card or whatever. You know, so disparaging his white adoptive parents every chance he gets. But anyway, ESPN NBA reporter Mark Spears took to Instagram on New Year's Eve to claim that an upscale San Francisco store, Anthem Interiors, racially profiled him and his group of friends. The store owner and founder, Janelle Lavener, don't care, apologized for the incident, but also strongly denied that any profiling took place. According to his friend, Spears, he and his friends, who were all African-American, he doesn't even, he looks Puerto Rican. Okay, whatever. We're all African-American. Felt two store employees profiled their group. I tried to give the lady that worked there the benefit of the doubt by asking if she knew where the nearest bathroom was. Why would... What? You thought you were being racially profiled by a, a lady that worked there, so you, you tested her. Is that what it is? So you thought you were being racially profiled in San Francisco, all right? Where they're so woke, they let people take a dump on the streets. You thought, well, the only way I can be really sure if I'm being racially profiled here is if I ask this employee if I can take a dump. She suggested that I go to the Haroldsburg Police Department across the street to use their facilities. Confused, I asked her, why would I go to the bathroom at the police station? Her, her response was, that it'll be okay, they won't arrest you. Ha! Spears implies being told that go to the police station and fearing arrest were racially motivated. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? The store owner responded to Spears' post and said employees tell all patrons, regardless of skin color, to use the bathroom at the police station and also said that employees often tell that exact same joke about sending people to the police station to use the bathroom. Don't worry, they won't arrest you line. Hi there, I'm the owner of Anthem in Haroldsburg, and I'm sorry to hear of your experience. I do want to let you know that we send all patrons across the street to the police station to use the bathroom! Exclamation point. The station doesn't seem to mind, as we previously sent folks across the street for the, uh, to the grocery on the corner, but it came too much for them to handle understandably. 
and the police station is open and welcoming. Since there isn't a public bathroom nearby, there was not di- this was not directed personally, and I have heard our associates joke to other customers about sending people there no matter what the pl- person's skin color was. It's their shtick, which clearly they need to reconsider. No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't need to reconsider. They aren't in the wrong here. They aren't in the wrong here. I get the joke. Don't you get the joke? Everyone gets the joke. Oh, you got to take a deuce? You go to the police station. Don't worry. They won't arrest you. Like, that's, I mean, it's an obvious joke. This is a byproduct of being someone that walks around all day looking to be offended, looking for their opportunity to go on Instagram and post about how they're a victim. This guy has a job for ESPN. All right? He's got it made in the shade, and he, pro- he tried to, no, he tried to ruin this business's uh, reputation, and he tried to ruin these people's lives because that's my new position on it, by the way. If you swat somebody, that's attempted an attempt on their life. If you try to cancel somebody, like a, a Me Too accusation, you try to ruin their life. And if you try to you know, perpet- perpetuate fake racism, you try to ruin their life. Why can I say that so confidently? Because that's the actual outcome usually. If they actually did it or they didn't do it, that's your intended outcome. That's why you posted the name of the business. That's why you went on Instagram and you didn't actually say something to them directly. I do see how it could have been misinterpreted, but I promise you that was not the intention. As a company, we have many employees of all colors, orientations, and religions. We love the Bay Area for its diversity and would have have it no other way. You're always welcome, and I really urge you to come in again, knowing this truth about the police station conversation, and look at us another way. Our staff loves Haroldsburg and the entire community and every single patron that comes in for shopping small business and supporting Haroldsburg in general. My sincere apologies for making you feel any other way. I mean, a fine response. Essentially, the apology reads, I'm sorry you felt that way, even though what you're saying didn't actually happen. But let's guess. Let, let guess right now <clears throat> by leaving a like on the video if you think that I mean you leave you leave a comment in the comment section if you think that he had a quiet mo- moment of reflection and and apologized or leave a like on the video if you think he doubled down Spears accepts apology but doubles down on racism Thank you very much for the response and apology. Accept it, he said. Thanks for the police station explanation, although the words after about not getting arrested didn't sit well. Also, another issue was being racially profiled as a whole upon entrance. Another commenter jumped in to heap praise upon Spears, calling him well-traveled, well-spoken, well-written. The commentator then said that the apology wasn't good enough and that her employees should seek training to obtain cultural competency skills. Lovner responded to this commenter saying that she would be honored to have Spears as a customer, but reiterated that she does not believe the racial profiling even took place. I've asked Mark why he felt profiled upon entering and I'm waiting to hear, but I will tell you that we are old school customer service oriented And we do approach customers all the time. These days, that maybe is surprising to say the least. So essentially, someone came in. He came into the store and someone asked him if he needed help. And he said they were racist. That's what happened. That's from what I understand. That's what's happened. That's what's happened here. Somebody dared ask this individual if they needed help. And he said, well, because I'm black racists i'm gonna blog this however she caves on the line about not worrying about being arrested which was clearly a joke remember jokes are not okay in 2023 now 2024 so spears accepted the apology but did not elaborate on the request on why he felt profiled because he didn't he didn't get profiled he made up the whole thing 
another person, another commenter decided to jump in and tell him that he, she needed to call him personally. She replied that she didn't have his direct line. Spears skipped over this reply and posted a heart emoji towards a commenter who he preys upon him. So a commenter said, you need to give him a call. She said, I will. I don't have his number. And then he didn't give it to her. Outkick reached out to Spears to ask if he could elaborate on what other racial profiling behaviors he believed ex he experienced. He has not responded. Spears also liked and commented positively towards several posts that suggested the store employees needed racial sensitivity training. I mean, give me a break. I was not at the store when the alleged incident occurred. All I can do is lay out the facts as I have them. There is no contextual information surrounding Spears' claims that are important to note. First, Spears specifically writes for an ESPN brand, Anscape, and that's the black-focused wing of the company that produced a documentary saying athletes are the new slaves, you know, the ones that get paid millions of dollars. In the five-part series dissected everything about American sports that they deem racist. Outkick debunked many of these claims. Essentially, the goal of Anscape is to find racism, whether it exists or not, from the outside looking in, and it appears that Mark Spears found it where it didn't exist. The guys, I mean, give me a break. Give me an absolute break. Another juicy sommelier looking for his 15 minutes. Here you go, you freaking loser, Mark Spears. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you have a like on it, and we'll talk to you again real soon.